Welcome to Anime Out of Context, a comedy review show hosted by a basement dweller who grew up scrounging terrible fan subs on sketchy websites prior to the convenience of modern streaming, alongside a willfully ignorant soul whose only knowledge of anime comes from the shows forced upon him here. This show will contain spoilers, incorrect information, and copious amounts of adult language. Our hosts are not experts on any topic, and everything they say should be taken with a grain of salt. Thank you for listening, and enjoy. Hello and welcome to Anime Out of Context, the show where I attempt to explain the sometimes weird, sometimes wonderful, but always hilarious world of anime. And Count Chocula, that motherfucker, owes me some money. I'm Sean Rollins. I'm Remington Chase. Hey, Rem, Rem, buddy, buddy, uh, how you feeling? Uh, uh, broken and spooky, Sean, broken and spooky. Well, that's good, Rem, that's good. <laughs> because, unfortunately... <laughs> I had some plans for this week, and unfortunately, I've had to postpone those plans in terms of recording because, Rem, we're broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's, it's, uh, we're not in a good state. Uh, I'm hoping that you won't just save something spooky for next week for our Halloween episode. I'm hoping that we can get a little spooky today. Um, I, I mentioned before, we don't do enough horror on this podcast. There's just not enough good horror anime out there, frankly. Um, that's what I'm hoping for, but I don't think that's what I'm going to get. Uh, well, actually, Rem, <laughs> believe it or not, I did actually have something kind of horror-ish. Ooh. Uh, but wh- whether or not it's actually, you know, proper horror... Okay, here we go. ...is up to you, because... Uh... All right, so it's about a ghost that's trying to seduce their sibling or some shit. All right, hit me with it, Sean. Actually, Come on. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, cause really, Rem, the true horror is the horror of production. Oh, god damn it. All right, all right. Because, Rem, uh, today, the anime we're gonna be talking about today is simply titled The Junji Ito Collection. Oh! Okay. I, all right, so here's the thing. Yep. First, I am familiar with Junji Ito. He had some of the, the spookiest shit around. Uh, I've, I've seen glimpses, uh, of his shit, right? Uh, super fascinating, dope concepts, horrifying. Yeah, he is the uh, premier horror mangaka. And so, obviously, I am interested in whatever this is going to, how, how, in this. I'm interested in Junji Ito, but also I have heard, I have heard, not in detail, not the reasons why, but I've heard this is disappointing. <sighs> Unf- I- I've heard that, th- for some reason, a lot of people were disappointed in the Junji Ito collection. Yeah, uh, that is true, unfortunately, Rem, because what makes Junji Ito so raw and terrifying is not only, like, the writing and the stories and the worlds, uh, but purely and simply the pacing and the art. Uh, because yeah, oh, yeah. Because Junji Ito has some of the most visceral, guttural, harsh line work that truly, like, makes you feel uncomfortable just looking at it. And it is fascinating and just some of the most be- like darkly beautiful stuff out there. If you're a horror fan at all, you should dip in to a bit of Junji Ito and you will understand. Uh, so, here's the question, John. Are, are you going to list the reasons why it's disappointing or are you going to leave them for me to find out? I mean, I'll give I can I'll give you the briefest uh the briefest idea of why it's disappointing. And that's just simply due to the fact that his art style is hard to convey in animation. Okay, That is okay. probably the biggest reason, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's the worst thing on the face of the planet. It just means that it's very hard to really uh, translate into an animated uh, version. Uh, uh, you, you know something that does Junji Ito styling really well? What's that, Rem? Uh, and, and it's such just a fascinating, unique concept in of itself. Uh, it, it is uh, a game that we've almost certainly talked about uh, years ago. Uh, World of Horror. Yes, yes. For those unfamiliar, uh, it is a Junji Ito roguelite, basically. Like, mm-hmm. that's... <laughs> um, delightfully fucked up, dark. Uh, and I, I think I'm going to make some assumptions, because it has some, like, limited animation within it as well, right? Right. And it does it pretty solidly, but it's because it's, one limited animation um 
not a ton of super fluid movement or anything because it's like the implications between the movement, between the stills, uh, adding that mystery element as well as something that really helps it out is its limited color palette. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, which once again, it's all of these artistic limitations of what we can see one, not being able to see the moments between frames, uh, super clearly all of the time Two, not being able to see all of uh, the colors available. Okay. There's a creepy looking shadow over here. Is that actually something or is that just a limitation of the art style stuff like that? Right. Um, they all add to the horror. So I imagine that, uh, you could fix that with Junji Ito, right? You could go super detailed and it could be absolutely horrifying by filling in those gaps, but you would have to do such a good job. Correct. And I'm going to assume that, Unfortunately, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, it's very unfortunate, to say the least, Rem. Uh, it, it's like, oh, I, I'm going to imagine, it's sort of like in a horror game, right? Where the first time you play it and you're, like, spooked, but then you keep dying to the same horrendous monster. And so by, like, the fifth time through, you're like, no, I know, I've seen this at times. You're no longer spooky. I, I know, I understand you now. We've left the uncanny valley. <laughs> yeah. But I will say the one thing that does make uh, this whole series interesting is that, uh, well, I don't know if we've done this before, Rem, but this isn't actually a series. It's an anthology. It is Oh. It is a, a large collection of various Junji Ito short stories converted into anime, essentially. I, I will say, Sean, yeah. I am a sucker for some anthologies. Ah, oh, believe me. I Anthologies are one of my favorite storytelling styles, especially in the horror realm. Correct. So that's what you're getting into. It's essentially a massive collection of a bunch of the shorter Junji Ito tales. Like, so you're not going to get like the full thing of like Uzumaki or anything like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you're going to get a lot of like the shorter stuff uh, to, you know, uh, really give you a taste of what uh, some of these stories are. Look, even though... A lot of people say it's going to be disappointed. I can't help but be excited for this week. I like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I just said a lot of, I, I have not heard many good, if any good things about it. Right. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's still like Junji Ito spooky stuff. So I, I feel like I should at least have a fun spooky time with it, even if the quality isn't completely there. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I was kind of hoping for with this week episode, Rem. Uh, because we needed something that would be easy for us to talk about, and what's easier for us to talk about than short-form horror stories uh, in the the spookiest month of the year? Uh, All right, well, I, I think it'll be interesting to see. Will my hopes be dashed, or will I be able to forgive the, the flaws? Either way, uh, if you're at all curious about horror stuff, read his manga, uh, and if you're really, really curious, after you've done that, then... Where you can join us and jump straight into the Junji Ito collection. Instead of Junji Ito, I feel like I'm watching Goosebumps. You're telling you can't. You're telling me you can't get that full raw experience in a matter of five minutes. You know, I I can't. I can't. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back after watching three whole episodes of 2018's Junji Ito Collection. And Remington, did this scratch your Halloween itch like you've been really wanting it to? Or was it as unfortunate as people have uh, led you to believe? I, I just realized, as you said it then, I don't know if you mentioned it in the first half. This was released in 2018? Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, well... <laughs> that does not bode well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> one, one of the things that I've mentioned on the podcast is that while anime is still trash, it is going through a bit of a golden age, especially in the quality of visuals, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it has been for a hot minute. Like, anime visuals, they have such a high ceiling right now, and so many things even if they're a bit trash, look stunning. Right. Uh, and you'd think with something with such a unique visual style as Junji Ito, you'd be able to capture that, especially since it wasn't too long ago. Uh, needless to say, that is not the case. Um, and it's one of its biggest flaws is that the visuals are mediocre to bad. There's some moments, there are some spooky moments that are like, 
oh hey, that's kind of neat. They did a decent job with that one. But most of the time, it lacks everything? Yeah. <laughs> um. That being said, I am spook deprived, so this is one of the better weeks for me. Uh, <laughs> I'll take whatever kind of spooks I can get. I'm quite happy. I, I, I'm not in the abyss, even if I am generally disappointed. Yeah, unfortunately, there's not much uh, to be done in terms of uh, uh, not disappointing you on this one, man. Because, like, Junji Ito is so, like, iconic for great horror stories. Yep. But it's very difficult when those horror stories are kind of incredibly poorly adapted. Now, one thing I am going to note is that I do have some critiques for the actual, like, stories themselves. Uh, For many of them, I don't know whether I am criticizing the story or the adaptation, um, I will find out depending on how much flack I get for it. Okay. <laughs> because I imagine if I'm like, oh, they did this, that was dumb, and it was an adaptation problem, people will be like, hell yeah, it was stupid. Fuck the, the, the anime. But if I criticize something that actually was just part of the original story, people will be like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm anticipating here. Well, I will say that uh, you don't have to worry as much as uh, the vast majority of these stories are, you know, like I said in the beginning, uh, some of the shorter form stories, and uh, most of his most iconic ones have not been adapted to this uh, anthology. Cool. We'll, we'll, we'll see if that staves off the weebs from getting really angry. Once again, I vibe hard with Junji Ito, but if you make a million different spooky story some of them aren't gonna be amazing just look at stephen king it's how that works look at rl stein it's how that works all right they can't all be winners and that's okay uh getting into the actual show itself uh our, our first sort of vignette right is all about uh the, this really really creepy boy suichi uh suichi is a creep who puts curses on people and has uh like good old voodoo dolls and does other shit with them, right? Um, and for most of episode one, it's all about that. Sometimes it's split 50-50 between them. Other times it's like 90% of the time on one story and then a couple minutes on the other. Uh, th this is one of those where the vast majority of episode one is all about Suichi and his curses. Um, and so he, he puts... It's not a great opener because the story isn't that great, and the pacing is really, really bad. Uh, it's essentially, Suichi does some curses and stuff, uh, causes some problems for people, and the whole time, it's very much like a classical story of creep fucks around but finds out, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you're sort of expecting maybe a twist where uh, he often harasses his, uh, his sister with different... Uh, different creatures like a toad or a spider, right? Uh, and freaks her out with it. And and so what you sort of expect is like maybe when he's away trying to harass others, she will like sneak a spider into his room and it will somehow curse him, get to a doll of him or something, right? Some, some haha -ha Uno reverse card. Mm -hmm. We never really get that. Instead, like he has one mild moment of comeuppance that is immediately excused because for some reason his brother is around and defending him, but we don't care about their relationship, so that doesn't matter. And his toad died. That's how that ends. And a lot of you guys will be wondering, like, oh, what? What am I missing? I'm also wondering that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, this is their opener. This is their first one. And it just sort of doesn't go anywhere. So not a great first impression. Um, but I will note the the main character, Suichi, uh, he is what I imagine people trying to be Sebastian from Black Butler, right? We <laughs> trying to be Sebastian, what they actually look like. Oh god. I'm so glad that I showed you that show now that you have that cultural touchstone <laughs> yeah, to really yeah. rip into. <laughs> <laughs> um anyway, so that's their the first story. E. Not a great one to open with, I'll be honest. Possibly one of the weakest. Out of, like, the four proper stories, I think it's the weakest one. Uh, then we have a bit that it was so quick that I genuinely thought it was a teaser for the next episode. Um, 
but essentially th this rich family their daughter is turned into a doll and then they turn into a a, a bug doll creature monstrosity and that happens in like two and a half minutes and then it's over what why <laughs> why i don't i don't understand sean well rem it's and don't get me wrong like i've seen some really good horror shorts right some really captivating short horror uh and it's done well if it does a lot with just a little but this does not very much with not very much <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely uh one of the issues of trying to convert something uh incredibly one like the original material is very short uh but is interesting in terms of manga because it's got incredibly detailed uh and disturbing imagery that Yeah, will, it's like uh, sit if you, you go that short, if you're trying to tell a story in 3 minutes or less, then those details need to be fine-tuned. They need to be highly curated uh, so that they are all serving a purpose. And we did not get that here. No. Uh, episode two. Episode two, uh, a young man uh, looks through a magazine, finds a creepy model, and has nightmares about her. Years later, uh, he's working with some friends on a like student film type deal. Mm -hmm. They have uh, sort of auditions, and the creepy model shows up, and he's like, holy shit, this is the creepy model. Um... Uh, they go to film in the woods, and the creepy model, uh, who's huge and has crazy teeth, starts eating them. And that's that one. Um, interesting idea. Love the idea. Way too rushed. Uh, I, th I feel like you're starting to realize the one of the unfortunate trends of this adaptation. I don't know why they felt the need to have two separate stories for every single episode. Uh, it's not working great for them. Because... The sort of vibe of this one with the creepy model is like, what's her deal? Is she actually creepy, right? But it's just immediately like, oh yeah, she's creepy. How do you know? Because she's fucking chasing you and now she ate a girl. It's like, oh, okay. Thanks for the suspense. <laughs> <laughs> the The visuals on this one were decent. S story concept is solid. Execution and especially pacing, really bad. Uh, moving on to part two of episode two, uh, we, we have a, a story of there's a hospital and one woman is very frightened of something, but we don't know exactly what's going on. She says the Reaper continues to visit her. Um, we also see that another patient has long dreams that are getting longer and longer. Uh, the patient slowly losing their mind because every single night they have like a year or two years of consciousness, uh, in their dreams, right? starting to fuck with them as it grows longer and longer as they grow less tethered to reality itself. Um, dope ass concept. Love it. A um, lot of things go unexplained, which unfortunately for how quick this happens, they need to either be explained or at least built to better. Because uh, as it stands, it just sort of hits you over the head with a bunch of stuff and then leaves the room. <laughs> and I, I need a bit more time to process, right? Um, eventually, on, you're, you're telling you can't. You're telling me you can't get that full raw experience in a matter of five minutes. You know, I I can't. I can't. Uh, eventually, the patient with the long dreams withers away and becomes ash or crystals for some reason. <laughs> like I guess it's because he's aging rapidly, but I also don't know why he's aging from the long dreams. I I sort of understood why he was fucked up. They showed him fucked up, and I was like, I can give that a pass. But I guess it is just that he is aging as well, which I think is a less interesting choice. Um, which, once again, that seems like something that is likely in the actual story uh, that I'm disagreeing with here. But I do just think it's not as interesting. Anyway, uh, then we, we basically at this point learned that the woman um, is afraid of death. Uh, it was not built up to. He's like, the doctor is like, ah, oh, yes, it's her greatest fear. And I'm like, I guess it's sort of been mentioned. <laughs> I guess there's been an offhand reference. And I suppose, I guess that is all that we have of her character. So he gives her the the crystals uh, of dead boy's brain. And she starts having long dreams to sort of prolong her life. Um, what Once again, interesting ideas does not last long enough. I, I sort of feel like instead of 
instead of Junji Ito, I feel like I'm watching just the bad Goosebumps, right? <laughs> Where oftentimes even the bad Goosebumps were, they had something interesting going on. They were at least entertaining. Yeah, but they, they were just like, the quality wasn't there. Uh, and you, there would be some major problems either with pacing or characters or whatever, right? Um, and I, so I feel like with this Junji Ito collection, that's how it is being conveyed to me. It's just the bad goosebumps. I like a lot of the ideas being presented, but that's about it. Uh, episode three, we go uh, with Crossroads Fortune Telling, which sounds like it's a real thing, I would assume, in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's where I mean you wait at a crossroads, and when people come by, you ask strangers for your fortune. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about it personally, but uh, I do believe that it might be a, a thing. Sure. And uh, women are committing suicide after getting their fortune told by the Crossroads pretty boy, um, who's just this dark, strange figure. Um, who for I was briefly confused on whether the Crossroads pretty boy was supposed to be our protagonist, because uh, we meet Fukada, who's a new kid, and... Uh, and he looks sort of similar to the Crossroads Pretty Boy. Um, like, there's obvious differences there, but in the same way as, like, you know when Yugi transforms into Yami Yugi, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, there's yeah. a transformation there, but, like, it's the same dude. So the, the Pretty Boy and Fukata, they look different in that kind of way. <laughs> I see. <laughs> They they look different where if, if you, like, had a Jacqueline Hyde moment, I, I would go with it. As well as Fukata has a story where this happened. He was a, a young boy. A woman came up to him at a crossroads, asked for a fortune, was like, I'm having an affair. Isn't that great? Is it going to work out well? And the little nine-year-old's like, what the fuck? Fuck you, no. Uh, and then she killed herself. And now it's happening a bunch more. Um, I, I suppose I just sort of don't... Like, did the pretty boy see her later? Is that just a completely isolated, separate event? Um, and then when it seemed like we were going to get so, an interesting interaction with the pretty boy, it just doesn't happen at the end. Um, so it just sort of ends like a wet fart. And I, I once again, like the ideas, wanted a little bit more out of it. There, there was what ended up feeling like a side plot of Fukada and his crush, but then his crushes best friend ends up conveying her love to him and Fukata and his crush don't get together even though they're both crushing on each other. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. This one could have been really good. This one could have saved it. It didn't. Uh, and then we get a quick ending one. Uh, this one actually works for a quick ending one. It has a, a straightforward concept that it conveys uh, decently well. I think it's, it's uh, paced okay for it being nice and short. It's a uh, slug girl. Uh, a, a girl struggles to talk. Turns out she's got slung slugs coming out of her face. Oh no! Uh, so her family uh makes a salt bathtub, but then she shrivels up. The slug comes out of her mouth. Use it becomes a snail, using her head as a shell. Um, that one actually worked as a short. Oddly enough, for what it was, that one worked out the best, I think. And there we go. There we have it. It was definitely disappointing. But one of the reasons I do like anthologies is that even if they disappoint me, I can at least have fun imagining the concepts, right? Mm -hmm. Which you can still definitely do. I don't think this is an actively bad watch. Essentially, you can have this on two fronts, right? One, as an adaptation, in which case, oof. Second, as a, a show unto itself, in which case, bad, but... Still a fairly enjoyable Halloween flick to just chill around and watch around spooky season. You know what I mean? Like, horror sort of has this quality about it where a lot of it is just ass, which ain't great, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it feels like every beginning filmmaker is like, ah, yeah, so we'll start off with a horror <laughs> to try and figure out how to make movies, um, especially with the creation of found footage. But... It, it, it does create a culture of like, hey, let's just watch some shitty horror with our friends. Uh, and in that environment, I think this could flourish. It's not bad enough to be super funny to watch with your friends. But once again, at least you still get those sort of Junji Ito concepts. Uh, I think this is an okay introduction to Junji Ito if you are unwilling to read. 
which you really should be willing to read because that's where it's really, really good. Life pro tip, <laughs> reading, solid shit. Like, because uh, while uh, all of these uh, anthology stories may not be the best he has to offer, some of those short stories are very good in terms of raw, like, uh, art and design. And, like, their short pacing does leave something to be desired, but at the same For time, sure. at least you're, with, you're with, going through it at your own With rate. watching this collection... What you will be able to glean from it is the concepts, right? The ideas. And those are dope as fuck. Uh, those are the things saving it. The execution and the art, pretty ass. Because, like, I, if you're at all curious about Junji Ito's works, uh, you're welcome to watch this adaptation and be like, hey, I don't understand what it's all about. If that's your response, then you have to actually look up the stories themselves because like the visual raw definition of some of the art is unsettlingly palpable like uh here rem i'll send you a picture of uh one of the panels from the long dream ah yes a little bit more uh unsettling than the loosely cg version i would say yeah as well as the fact that it's just so much more detailed which if this were a show from 2008 or 1998 i'd be like sure okay gotcha 2018? No. <laughs> you can make some dope-ass spooky details in 2018. And people have. But, uh, yeah, no, Studio Dane did, just didn't really uh, put forward their A-game with this one, unfortunately. You know, I suppose it's very fitting. I wouldn't have this as my Halloween headliner. But would I put it somewhere in October's rotation? Sure, sure. Uh, and so I feel like you have placed it in a, a fair spot. Not quite Halloween worthy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the hard thing, Rem, is that when it comes to horror and anime, it's a bit of a touchy subject because uh, sometimes there are a lot of really, really bad, awful horror anime out there, and finding the good ones is the hardest thing to do. I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Because, like, once again, there, there's obviously a market for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It, but so often. They just use a vaguely dark aesthetic, and that's it. Yeah, it, it really depends. Like, there's a lot of uh, different factors at play uh, for making good horror. Uh, like, for example, just the raw differences between uh, a more Eastern-style horror and Western-style horror, uh, as well as just mixed with the fact that, hey, uh, they're only given so much budget and so much to work with, as well as finding good source material that is easy enough to adapt. It's... There's a lot of minor details that uh, make it very difficult to really properly make a horror adaptation. And, and when it does go through cleanly, it's fantastic and wonderful and lovely. But actually getting to that point is very difficult, unfortunately, uh, which is unfortunate and disappointing. But uh, who knows? Maybe down the line we'll get uh, more interesting and well-executed horror. Like, uh, I would consider uh, Perfect Blue a horror movie, for example. Remember when we watched oh, yeah, that one? Yeah, 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 that one was nice and fuck. Exactly, and I think that's an excellent example of it. It wasn't like your true raw traditional horror, but it was horror in like the realism and the suspense effect. And I find that uh, some of the best horror anime adaptations tend to lean more in that direction rather than raw, disturbing imagery and, um, you know, traditional uh, horror ideas. But yeah, that's, that's the Jinji Ito collection, man. It's... It, 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 it has some more. value, but it's definitely very, very, very flawed, both as an adaptation and a standalone product. Yep. And uh, hopefully the Junji Ito diehards out there will not come after us for that. <laughs> because uh, I feel like we've mentioned enough that we both really enjoy his works. Yes, like, even if I'm sure that I criticized like his actual stories amidst this episode as well, which is okay, everybody. It's gonna yeah. be okay. And even and sometimes those stories just work better in manga form because you control the pacing yourself. Yeah. That is it it is genuinely horror is so tricky to adapt from one medium to another, which is more than a little unfortunate. But you know what? It just I think that the more they make, the more they'll learn from the failures and are able to uh hopefully adapt better things in the future. Uh, but Rem, if you had to guess what the mouse score for the Junji Ito collection is, what do you think it would be? Um, I think it's going to be a 6.87. 6.87. I, I think there's going to be a lot of backlash on it. All right. 
Well, Remington, uh, with a very staggeringly low 65,000 ratings, uh, the Junji Ito collection is sitting only at 6.41. Oh, shit. Uh, I, I will say, compared to what we've seen, doesn't deserve to be that low, but I understand the backlash. Yeah, no, lots of people were wildly upset with the way uh, the, this adaptation handled literally everything. To the point of raw, like, distaste for the whole experience, which is a shame. Uh, but if anything, what this episode of our podcast is meant to do, Rem, is it's meant to highlight one of the coolest uh, horror uh, creators out there, uh, who is <laughs> very funnily a very soft-spoken, quiet guy. You can find videos of him reacting to cats in anime out there, <laughs> for example. <laughs> and rating on how scary they are. <laughs> Hell yeah. It is, it is, Junji Ito is a fantastic creator, and I wanted to do this episode to, one, get us in kind of the Halloween spirit, and not so much to focus on a bad adaptation, as much as to focus on what could be and what there is to to watch and consider. Well, I look forward to seeing what you have in store for our Halloween special next week, Sean. Mmm, way to put a lot of pressure on me, my guy. <laughs> <laughs> So with that in I, mind... I've heard, I've heard that Sean intends next week to be the single best Halloween episode we've ever had. Okay, Rem, <laughs> please don't do that. People are gonna be... Oh, Rem, like, we're both still broken. Our energy levels are low lately, oh, my guy. Oh, my God. We're gonna get in trouble if people are like, oh, they showed that for Halloween? The fuck is wrong with them? It's not even, like remotely spooky no they'll like, be like about time it's the forest fairy 5 revisit baby there's no point in revisiting <laughs> forest fairy 5 Rem. there is literally no point <laughs> you've seen one episode you've seen it fuck it all there's no point like Rem, i think we're the sole reason people even know about that yeah, we're the, yeah, we, we, we disseminated it into the world we're actually we were yeah. the producers of the show fun fact oh okay. <laughs> And that's why we're currently broke. <laughs> <laughs> Spent our life savings on Forest Fairy 5. Oh, God, what a dark time that would I be. Just... <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's been scored by just a thousand users. Yeah. Many of those yeah. because of us. Yep, 1,000%. Because, <laughs> I don't know if you recall, Rem... But last time I had Dylan on, he did some malpoliticking to try and boost the rating so he could do a special episode with you down the line. Yep, yep. So, you know, that's the life we're leading. Uh, so I suppose with that in mind, Rem, uh, final uh, question to ask Yeah, Any chance you'd like to watch a little bit more of the Jinji Ito collection sometime? Uh, yeah, you know, as long as it's October, I'd probably be willing. Fair enough. And with that, thank you all so much for uh, tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you enjoy listening to us slowly dying throughout the month of October, then you can head on over to wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review. They do mean the world to us, and we do read every single one. And if that is not enough for you, you can head on over to twitch.tv slash animeoutofcontext, where you can uh, watch myself, Dylan, and Remington occasionally play video games when it's not, you know, the spooky month. Because unfortunately, during the spooky month, it's hard for us to do anything <laughs> other than... Uh, Give us another week or two yes. and we'll, we'll be streaming. Trust us. Yeah. And maybe we'll do a horror stream to make up for it. We'll see. Uh, that'd be a good idea. That's smart. That's smart. A good old early November horror stream. <laughs> <laughs> early November horror stream. People will be like, oh man, that was a great October season. I'm done with spooky stuff. Let's move on and focus on like the family and the holiday season and such. And then us chuckle fucks are coming in. It's like, hey, uh, <laughs> who wants to play uh, the Undertaker's assist Mortuary Assistant? That's there the one. Go. That's the new popular oh, one. Oh, and yeah. you know, I'll, I'll, I may as well. I'll play some World of Horror at the beginning of November. There we go. It'll be great. Hell yeah. And I'll play another horror game as well. Well, we'll, we'll do a little bit of horror. If, if Our... there are any, like, co-op horror games out there, let us know. A any that can make us both, like, genuinely spooked, fuck yeah. Yeah, because Phasmophobia don't do it anymore, guys. It just doesn't work that way. <laughs> like, it was spooky the first couple of times, but after a while, it's just frustrating. Um, so, yeah. And if that is still not enough for you, you can head on over to patreon.com slash animeoutofcontext. Gain access to all kinds of lovely bonus material, including having the opportunity to be thanked live on the podcast. So, Rem, who are we thanking this week? 
As always, we would like to send our regards to all of our bland bitch protagonists, as well as our magical girls, who we really appreciate. But moving on, we go to our yandere waifus, who are transforming into horrendous spirals before our eyes. And on that list, we have Zombie Snomp 91, Soul Eater is Life, Xanax, you did it, Rem, you finally did it, you pronounced my username correctly, now to see if you're consistent, Spisitis, uh, Yandere Neko, Why Shown, Why Sean, Humstov, Walk Me Home Gently, Way to Shell, Turtly Enough for the Turtle Club, Trend and Feral, Travis J. Humphrey, Totally God, The Susanator, The Big Bean, Take My Cheeks, Struggle Bus Celia, Static Shock is my favorite anime, Stacy's Mom, Silent Secondary, Shoju Addict, Who Doesn't Need Help, Just More Manga to Read and Anime to Watch, Sean's Hot, Throbbing, Gumdrop Buttons, Sean Still Use Internet Explorer, uh, Sounds Like He Must Like It Nice and Slow, Sean Punish Rem and Make Him Watch Excel World, Sean Is Incredibly Lucky I Don't Know the P.O. Box Yet, Unless Rem Can Tell Us Where I Can Find It, Salty Pretzel, Ross Palmer, Rhiannon Williams, Rem continues to crush my soul. Rem wants to be Isekai in a world where Milf Hunter Sean gives him white sorts advice on hot Milf cards. Uh, Rem gave me depression, reincarnated as the judge over Israel in the Bronze Age. The nightmares of that king I disemboweled still haunt me. Uh, no waifu, no laifu, Nitsaira, Nick Harvey, Mikeka Seven Yerto, Mexican Gone Freaks, Matto Two Max, Lizzie Anthea, Leave Denji and Pochita out of harm's way, Chad Cougar Bait. King Richrock, Casey Mosley, Cassidy, Just a Traveler, Jax, Jam Hands. Isekais took over from mecha shows when mangakas went from playing with Transformers to World of Warcraft, insists Misaka. In Sean voice, oh, please, poo poo wee wee poo poo yee yum yum. <laughs> so bad right now. It's so bad. Yeah, right no, now. like, we're still <laughs> we're still on the broken end of the spectrum, unfortunately. I, Remington, am a Kappa, and I love to steal everyone's butt balls. I want to feast on your despair. Now give me a cool and interesting anime-related pun name, you Irish fuck. Oh, man. Uh, gonna go with, um... God, I, I've got nothing. Uh, I've, I've genuinely got nothing. Like, <laughs> I have a hard time when I'm at 100%, but even harder when it's, uh, at this. Let's go with, uh, man, you, you must be, uh... Uh, a spooked mangaka, so I guess that must make you horror Koshi. Jesus Christ. Uh, and I want Rem to ruin Darling Koshi's in the Franks mangaka. for me. I, Remington, am a, just a high school girl with the power of God and bitchiness on my side. I embarrassed myself in front of a group of bearded men asking if any of them were you guys get well soon. <laughs> love that, love that. Uh, Hunter Davies, hey, Yooks, there's the water in this hellhole. Glenn Michael Dolan, fuck of love, Fox and boy. Ferdy the Birdie, Farmer Weeb's bad pickup line of the week. Want to breed? Uh, I, I just, and this happened uh, last week too. I, I hear that and I just, it's awful. But I'm reminded of the duck song, but instead of like, got any grapes, it's just want to breed. I just, what? <laughs> what? Wait, I, I, I don't, Rem. Rem? Rem. Duck walks into the lemonade stand and he says to the man, Run to the stand. Hey, ba ba ba. Wanna breed? No! Rem, we can't talk about ducks and breeding in the same verse. No, the duck is the one saying it, so it's fine. No, that makes it worse. That makes it worse, Rem. Ducks are awful in that regard. <laughs> they are, they are. They are objectively some of the, the worst. That duck is going to sexually ravage that lemonade stand down there. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know why, but that's, this one came to my mind, and it's real fucked up. All right, Fantide, Extreme Cobra, Elite Knight, <laughs> Duck. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. I'm so to, sorry. To the user uh, whose name is Duck, um, no. my apologies. Yes, that's good. Apologize. <laughs> On hand and be. Got any grapes? Bum, bum, bum. Uh, uh, drink chocolate milk to prevent wobbly bones. Not a conspiracy. Uh, Dickite, Mimicin, Picture, and Pentafluorethyl, Trifluorophosphate, also known as FAP, and tri finally Trans 1 4 Biz 4 Pridaleth. Crumb Sluts Bakery. Now try our Crumb Guzzlers. Creed 13, Cheese Monkey, Cage in the House, Brock Hard for Geodudes, Blood for the Blood God, Skulls for the Skull Throne, Big Blue Bear Boy. As my father once said, if you go to a strip club, don't stick in what you aren't willing to lose. And when that final moment came to pass, like Christ, I came a riding on an ass. Elise Howard, AJ Tunnels, AJ Honey, a daze. And now we go to the Boy Wizard tier where you get the task you avoided by writing a Patreon, Patreon name, Chris. You get planning your fiance's B-Day. Uh, and for the Boy Wizard tier, 
everybody is going to be assigned their own Junji Ito story. Uh, that's that's actually nice and lovely. I I I figured it was a a solid one. Uh, so we start with you, Yu Hawk Show is the best tournament arc anime. You get Hanging Balloons. Warning, you're 799 episodes away. You get Uzumaki, Vincent Calabrese. You get My Dear Ancestors. The Great Butt Ball of Despair. You get Layers of Fear. Shane Ware, conduit of hedonistic pansexual polyamorous switches. Uh, you get The Enigma of the Amagar Fault. Sean, you are my idol, and just like you, I also like Boku no Pico. Uh, you will get Lingering Farewell. Sandman, you are going to get Army of One. Numinal Tramim... Cr tram microscopic silico volcanos coniosis is the longest word in the English dictionary. Uh, you get long dream. Please watch Healer Girl, a cute slice of life about using music to heal people. Also, Rem is still a girl. You are going to get love sick dead. Order up of seriously high proof whiskey and hot chicken spicy enough to literally make you breathe fire. You get fashion model. My Afro ate my dog. You get headless statues. Mike got his Overlord review. You are going to get Oshikiri. Miguel Delion, you get Tomi. Massimo Martelli, you get Frankenstein. My Tawa says first three arcs of Bakamonogatari is just eight episodes. You get The Licking Woman. Excuse me? <laughs> Pardon me? Uh, Latino stopped eating from confusion about Sean's relationship with body pillows. Uh, you get The Bully. Inuyasha is my favorite cryptid. You get Town Without Streets. Hey, Rem, do a backflip. You get Glyceride. Go ahead, call the cops who won't silence the voices. They're getting louder. Please send help. You get Black Paradox. Crimson Reapers, just because of the scythes. You get The Window Next Door. Beethoven 1201, you get The Thing That Drifted Ashore. Anime Girl, you are going to get The Secret of the Haunted Mansion. Animated Z, you are going to get Dissection Girl. All Father is that anime bonsai this weekend. Woo, you get... uh. The Human Chair. Aaron Hegland, you are going to get The Chill. Rem uh, and then there we go. Uh, that is everybody. Now we go on to the Joey Wheeler tier where uh, Sean will be reading Junji Ito quotes to you as Joey Wheeler. Uh, and he, it's going to be telling your fortune, telling your crossroads fortune as Junji, Junji Ito, Joey Wheeler. Uh, Rem, considering we just watched a story about how that gets people to kill themselves, I don't know if that's the best methodology. Well, here we are. <laughs> oh, my Christ. Okay, hold on. So we start out with Remington is a weeb. Uh, let's see. Uh, quotes. So sorry. Quotes specifically from Junji Ito or from uh, his works? I'll be honest. Either works. Okay. Whatever, whatever you feel good about deep in your loins, Sean. All right. Here it goes. Uh, how does Junji Ito make you feel in your loins? Uh, I am a horror maniac who prefers to stay at home. <laughs> All right, uh, so Remington is weeb. Uh, stay at home. You must, for your sake. Next up we go to Raftalia's my anime waifu has returned. Um, I, I pulled up a list, but like every other one is the exact same as the previous one. That's unhelpful. Hold on, I need to find a different list. It was a list of one? It was a list of like six of them, but every other one was like this one or another one. It's like, eh, that's not very helpful. Where the, I need more, where are the quotes? Uh, God. Okay, sure. Why not? Uh, come on. What's so precious about a monster? Uh, so okay. you are gonna fall in love with a monstrous person. Uh, next up we have Pizza Cotton Candy is my waifu. Uh, that was very scary. <laughs> what the fuck? What kind of... Oh, I love looking for fucking quotes and you have that. God damn it. Uh, th th this is the fortune that sometimes you, your co-host in the near future will disappoint you. Uh, next up we got Magic Ice Ball. Uh, how about this for an out of left field one? Uh, the road that cat wand mastery is long and treacherous indeed. You are gonna become a master of cat wands. Next time you see a cat, just use it as a wand. Uh, next. <laughs> you gotta learn some way. It's long and treacherous. You're gonna get scratches, but it's okay. Uh, next up, we, I love you more than my jar of fingers and cold cum. Oh, I hate that. Uh, sleep is very important. Everyone get enough sleep. Many manga artists die young, and it's because they don't sleep. Your, idea, your best ideas come to you when you're sleeping. Please, everybody, get some sleep. Either you're in for a, a eternal sleep or eternal wake. So choose now and choose wisely. 
Which one is more horrifying? I don't know. <laughs> Next up, we have Demon Ray 13. Yeah, this town is uh, contaminated with spirals. There we go. Like, it's not that interesting of a All comic. right, well, uh, really uh, Demon, Demon Ray, avoid the spirals. Otherwise, they shall infect you. Uh, <laughs> next up, we got my dear old mom. <laughs> okay, this one just makes me laugh out of context. Uh, his spine's turned into a spring. What the hell? <laughs> Visit a chiropractor. <laughs> <laughs> Very important. Next up, we got Chelsea Nasbaum. Um, but it's my dream to replace my bed with a coffin. <laughs> Charles, you're going to fucking die, my dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm so sorry. There's just not a lot I can easily pull from. Next up, we have Blood Cell. Back to not being the white one. Fuck those guys. They're way too aggressive. Uh, Mostly, I'm just getting disturbed by a lot of the very creepy art as I'm looking for quotes. I'm going to be real with you. Uh, All right, here. Stop right there. All right. Wait, wait. I've got one. Okay, I've okay. got one. I mean, we really don't know what's making people change in the snails. <laughs> uh, 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 mm. Careful, Ram. <laughs> All right, Blood Cell, you're going to solve a very important mystery, but you'll be too slow about it. Uh, last but not least, going above and beyond, we got none other than Dylan Hayden. Oh, how did I forget this one? Uh, to wrap it up, you get one of the best ones. Uh, this is my hole. It was made for me. You're going to get late tonight, Dylan. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Oh, God. All right. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in. If you want to reach out, whether it's for a comment, question, feedback, or recommendation, you can tweet us at AnimeConPod on Twitter or send an email over onto AnimeOutOfContext at gmail.com. Once again, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. We love and appreciate you very, very much. And as always, uh, don't fuck your sister. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. That duck is going to sexually ravage that lemonade stand down. <laughs> oh, God! <laughs>